Hi, in this tutorial I want to look at how to use bitmap to material within Unreal. The reason for this is uh, that I oftentimes have been frustrated with building, uh, using bitmap to material 3 and building this fantastic uh, shader that I think looks really good and then getting everything plugged into Unreal and not having it look quite the same. It's just uh, not exactly there. Sometimes it's because um, Substance bitmap to material has got uh, this HDRI image that's providing some other reflectivity, and I'm not sure about all the reasons, but um, luckily, uh, Substance uh, has designed a way that you can actually work with bitmap to material right within Unreal, right within the game engine, and so it makes things uh, much more flexible. Uh, really, some powerful tools. Uh, we're going to uh, create uh, Substance. Um, shaders for a couple of objects in here so we can get this out of kind of just the default texture mode into some other ways. Now a few uh, bits of information that you've got to make sure that you do. First of all you must have the Substance plugin installed. To get this uh, the easiest way is to just go to the Epic Launcher, go into the Marketplace, search for Substance, find the Substance plugin and go ahead and click on Install to Engine. Uh, you can install it to the different versions of the engine. I'm using 4.19 here. Make sure that after you install it, you have to restart Unreal. Once you restart Unreal again, then you'll have to come into the settings, come into the plugins, and you'll likely have to click on the Enabled button to make sure that it enables. When it does that, it will tell you you need to restart again a second time. Uh, so you'll need to restart it again. Uh, but when all that is complete, then you should be able to come back uh, and access it uh, in, in useful ways. You'll know that Substance is installed because you can see this source button up here, although we're not going to use this. This just downloads uh, pre-built texture or substance substances from elsewhere, which we don't want. We're going to build them ourselves. Now a few other pieces of setup is I've come in and I made a new folder called bitmap. Uh, B2M bitmap to material output. The idea is I'm just going to put all of my substances in here to keep them separate from all the other uh, assets that I have, just a little bit of organization. Uh, and the last thing that I did is that I went in and in the original Maya file I built all of these uh, as Photoshop documents, all the textures as Photoshop documents. Uh, so what I've done is I went in, grabbed all those Photoshop documents and resaved them as, um, as JPEGs just uh, for uh, uh, a quick output. So all of these are set here um, as JPEGs. Uh, Substance is really picky about knowing what it's bringing in. So uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to make a new folder that I'm going to call my texture sources. You can call it whatever you want. That name is arbitrary. Uh, in here I'm going to click on the import button. Uh, in the import button now I can go find uh, on my desktop my textures. As I grab all these textures, it's super important that you change this so that it knows that these are actually substance input images. Now these are all saved as JPEG, so I'm going to use substance image input JPEG um, to bring those in. Um, with all of those selected and imported, then I can bring them in and have them here. This will be important in a second when we look at them. Now the second thing is, is we need to start to bring in some other assets that will allow us to actually create substances uh, within Unreal. Um, to do this, again, I'm going to click on the import, and what we have to find is where we have saved the bitmap to material. What this actually is is just an uh, SBAR, a substance uh, archive uh, that we can use. For most systems, then this information will actually be in your program, uh, uh, program files folder. Uh, so I have actually mine um, here on the G drive. Uh, usually it's under this strange name 3, uh, or sometimes this will be in your algorithmic um, folder. Uh, but then in here, in your data folder, will actually be this bit back to material, um, whatever it is. This is actually the, the archive. I'm going to go ahead and open this up. Um, bring it in. And now it's going to ask me uh, what are the import options we want to do. Now there's three things that we're going to be dealing with here. One is the factory that allows us to work with the substance um, substances. Second is uh, an instance of that substance and third is a material. So I'm going to start off with the tile. So I'm going to first tell it that I definitely want to have it here and I'm going to change this to my tile and I'm just going to call it B2M. That's uh, arbitrary, but uh, the idea is this is an instance of that uh, that 
uh, substance. The second thing is, is I'm going to come down and I'm going to make sure that it's saving to uh, my B2M output here. And this is going to be my tile uh, B2M material. Okay, the material will, is used differently than the substance. So remember, here we're creating the, the substance. Here we're creating the material that we can actually attach to things. I'm going to go ahead and click on Import. Now I do this, a couple things happen. One is you'll see that here is the Substance Instance Factory. Here is actually uh, the Substance Input Graph uh, that, we're, that we're going to be using. And then it started to create a whole bunch of other things that are set here. And third, there is actually the material that we've created. I'm going to look at this slightly different. I'm going to look at it in columns so that I can see this a little bit easier and organize them by type. So again, material substance graph input and then the actual factory that allows us to work with it. Now the way that we would use this is that for instance if I am grabbing uh, this floor here with this tile I can take the actual tile to uh, to uh, tile button map to, mater to material material but that's a funny name and go ahead and apply it to that object. Now right now nothing much happens in fact it looks like we break everything uh, to start with. If I double click on this and open up in the material editor you're going to see that here's the material and it already has tied in a bunch of uh, nodes um, that we've got uh, built that um, is uh, the stuff that uh, substance builds um, uh, automatically. All those all those nodes that we're looking at here, all these textures are right here. There's these texture 2Ds um, here, but of course they're empty here. There's nothing in it. But of importance for us is that now I can look at this substance graph uh, and I can uh, double click on it and here this should look a little familiar because all of these are the same options that we have available inside of bitmap to material if it were a standalone. Now I could nest this but for right now I'm just going to uh, minimize it over here so we can uh, see it um, in our space uh, as we've got going on. So this the workflow here will be much the same so I can scroll down to the bottom it's saying uh, well I better make this a little bit bigger so you can see what is our main input? Our main input is going to be our color uh, in this situation, this is going to be our cement floor color, our tile. This is stuff that I've already uh, tracked down. Uh, so as I'm looking at it, I'm, again, when I click these, notice these are the specific files that I used that import where I told them that they were going to be substance um, textures uh, so that they're where they need to be. Now, you'll see that already it started to change a little bit about how that, uh, how that looks. Uh, the power of this is is that now we can use all the cool things that bitmap to material allows us to do. So for instance, um, if we wanted to come down and click on make it uh, make it tile, we could uh, tell a substance to take a shot at tiling. Sometimes I can clean that up. I can invert the reliefs so I can see which way works better for me. It looks like inverting the relief works better for me here. It makes the tiles look like they come out. Um, I'm not going to go into a lot of what's happening here because uh, most of this is available in the bitmap to material discussions. Um, but some of the other things that we can do is, for instance, we can start to play with roughness. Uh, as I start to play with roughness here, we'll start to see that that surface can start to actually feel specular in ways that we would predict um, so we can see how, how that works. So you can go through and kind of play with all the different things here, including, oh, let's turn on the grunge. Um, things you have to remember, though, is that uh, if you use things like grunge, since we're tiling the texture here, um, then sometimes that grunge can start to uh, can start to tile itself, uh, and you have to be kind of careful as you're playing with it. But um, you can play with all these different settings and, and get that get that ready to roll. Now, the last thing that I want to do is talk about how we would create a second material. Now, we already have the factory. We only need one factory, but we do want to have a separate substance graph instance and a separate material for each material that we're working with. Um, so uh, what I can do is I'm going to click on the instance factory, create a graph instance. Um, we'll go ahead and come over here. Um, so that we'll use that as the input and then this is the same process before as before. Uh, so here, uh, let's do this as dome bitmap to material that will create the instance and uh, here this will be my dome bitmap to material. I'm going to call this material. Uh, go ahead and click on import here. So what it does is now we've got a new substance input graph and a new material 
and all of these new uh, substance textures that are here as well. Let's go ahead and save all before I uh, crash, in case I crash. Um, so again, uh, in this case, what I'll want to do is, let's, uh, let me show you how I track this down. I want to make sure I know what these are. Uh, I'm looking at uh, this wall. I'm going to double click on it, open up my material editor. If you have uh, two uh, monitors, this can be very helpful. Um, so uh, this particular texture, again, I'm making a new material off of each of these. This one is sphere room color. That'll be fine for what we're doing here. I'm going to go ahead and close that down. Um, I want to make sure I take the material. Uh, drag that onto the, the element there. All of that shuts down. But now if I go into the dome bitmap to material substance input graph, then I can start to build this in the same way that I did before. Again, this is all still tying into the material uh, that we would see in the material editor. So now I can come in and uh, tell it that here I want to use, uh, see what was it? Oh, sphere room color. Okay, so now I've got the color in there, but it's automatically starting to create all the other sorts of things that we would want it to create, uh, including uh, uh, relief, normal maps, all those kinds of things. So if I need to, I can take a look at what uh, inverting the normals w looks like. Uh, I can play with however I want to work with those, uh, with that uh, normal and how I want to play with, with it. Um, again, some of the low-hanging fruit that are easy to look at is I can start to play with that roughness to decide whether I want those walls to feel wet or, or not, to have any sort of uh, specular highlight. Um, I probably don't want to have very much on the walls, although I might have a little bit on the floor. Um, but you can start to see how all that comes together. Um, so that's again the process every time for new material. You just come down to the factory, right-click on uh, this option here, create a graph instance, and then out to here again. Each time you'll make sure to save both a material and a substance instance, um, and then you can start to rebuild them as you need to. When this is done, uh, you'll be able to start to see how, uh, like in this area, you can see that these are substances um, that they have a much uh, more mature look than, say, this floor, which is just a flat color. The walls I'll probably rework uh, as well. Now, one other thing I wanted to show you here is that if you take a look as we've been building here on these materials, if I double click on any of these materials, uh, this will open up uh, in the material editor and we can actually see that what it's been, uh, what it's done is that all of these uh, textures that we've, uh, it automatically generates the textures and plugs them into the material, uh, including the new normal maps and all those different kinds of things that, that we're using. Anyway, I find this to be a really effective way to really build materials and substances in ways uh, that uh, I can trust so that I know what it is that I'm uh, finally getting uh, in the game engine so that I can see that they match. Hope that's helpful. Have a good one.